Hello, I'm Alex Mansfield, the host of Manny Talk Shooting, and welcome to another episode. This is the shooting podcast where I talk to individuals all across the shooting industry. We'll talk competition, self-defense, concealed carry. If you like this content, check out our YouTube channel, Manny Talk Shooting. And without further ado, let's get to this episode. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Manny Talk Shooting, the shooting podcast where I talk to individuals all across the shooting industry. But first, we got to talk about this show's sponsor. This show is sponsored and brought to you by Go Fast, Don't Suck. So if you want to go fast and not suck, you better go get some of their stuff. You go get some dry fire targets, some shirts, some match jerseys. Go enjoy the memes on the internet, people, because we all love memes in this time and day and age. But without further ado, let's get to today's topic and guest. Today's guest is Mr. Matt Chua of the A-Zone podcast. We have now going to have two, you know, the whole half, half of the A-Zone is going to be on the Manu Talk Shooting podcast. So it's a great day. Matt, how are you doing today, sir? Doing good. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. It's a wonderful mid to late May day, if anyone actually cares when these are recorded. I know I know everyone wants to know everything about my life, so not really. I know I'm, I'm a nobody, but anyway. So Matt, we're finally sitting down. We've made this one. This one's been a long one in the making, too. So Yes, it has. It has, except you kind of told me, now you got to wait until majors happen again so we can chit-chat. So but it's all good. <laughs> majors have happened. Yes, they have. All right, Matt, you know, we chit chat back and forth every once in a while. I know a little bit about you, but the listeners probably don't. So who is Matt Chua and how did you get into shooting? Uh, well, I mean, Matt Chua is just an average, average guy, right? So, um, so newly made uh, GM and carry optics. I'm one of the ho- co-hosts of the A-Zone podcast alongside Coy Wynn, Connor Knutson, and Calvin Trung. Calvin Trung, who you may or may not know as Fuck Long. I thought um, there was two Koys, though. Is there a racial joke in there somewhere? No, it's just, it's funny. I don't know how people <laughs> call Calvin Coy. Asians look alike or something like that. So, um, fair enough. So, carry optics is my primary division. I, I did dabble a little bit with starting off in limited and open. And currently, right now, after carry optics, I usually play around with both limited and production. Yeah. So, when, when you were back, when you said you were playing in open a little bit, what were you using in that? I, so I actually have that gun right here and oh shit, I'm also drinking. Um, oh, it's okay. Just don't, yeah, you, you're not too blitzed yet. So yet. Um, okay. So for any of the Nazis, yes, this thing is unloaded. Um, this is actually a modified 19 back when I was younger and more impressionable. It's got a, it's got a KKM comp, RMR, Magwell, that kind of thing. Um, so I started USPSA. I actually started with the 34 from appendix. Um, just as an idea, I've, I've explained this on my podcast, but, um, is again, it was just, Hey, how trash am I at concealment? That kind of thing. Um, after like my first two matches in limited, because it was actually an indoor match. And then after my, at my first outdoor match in USPSA, um, was when I was actually playing with that gun in open. That's kind of what happened. And then after about six months, I said, screw it uh i just want minor power factor for a while and then that's when i decided to do carry optics with an actual belt rig. gotcha now so you started as a tactical timmy with your roland special yeah more or less yeah so chuck pressburg was impressionable on you all <laughs> yeah yeah young young dumb 22 yeah now did you uh did you ever dabble in the primary and secondary community at all uh i did but that was primarily so i could get deals on cheap gun parts Hey, nothing wrong with that. You got to get them good discount codes, right? Uh, it wasn't discount codes. I just lurked around on the classifieds and picked up and, and picked up a barrel, and also, um, and also, actually, that red dot mount. That's a Duick mount, isn't it? Uh, no, actually, it's a Raven Concealment Balor. Oh God, that is retro. That's like super, like tactical Gucci gear. Yeah, right. But I mean, this thing's almost bombproof, except the. Uh, it still uses Allen keys to secure everything on. So everything's going to break after you mount it. Oh, yeah. You're going to strip the screws and it's going to be game over. Yep. So actually, I stripped, the, I stripped the screw heads the first time. So I had to go to a gunsmith. Thankfully, however, uh, he decided not have me pay for it because he ended up scratching the uh, the, the RMR on it a little bit. <laughs> Well, at least you make your pay for it, right? <laughs> yeah, but I says like, "Hey, man, you you saved me a lot of time," and so I just gave him five bucks for beer. Oh, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone likes beer. I mean, even if you don't drink beer, you'll, you'll still take beer money. Yeah, right. It's primer money at that point, or something. Mm. 
Oh, there you go. Now, Matt, have you taken any formal training? Uh, I have. Um, I've taken three classes. One of them was actually the inaugural centrifuge training uh, red dot pistol class. That was just kind of like getting, it was getting the instructor for red dot pistol, like his feet on the ground. That way he could teach law enforcement a little bit more effectively. It was, I think it was a class of four actually. Um, so variety of, ver small variety of people from different backgrounds. I was still a college student. Actually, I just finished college at the time. And then everyone else has various jobs. One of them was actually a detention uh, doctor. Um, and then a Timmy and then another dude who I accidentally forgot about. Oopsie. <laughs> yeah. And then I've also taken a Tim Heron class as, and that was his practical uh, performance pistol training class. And then the, um, the JJ uh, advanced uh, field course. You mean class. Ray Ray Jacuzzi, right? No, no, no. No, Calvin is Ray Ray. Oh, can we get JJ to sign a Ray Ray Jacuzzi shirt? That's up to Calvin. Come on, Calvin. I know you're not going to listen to it, but hey, it's on the internet now. It is now. Yep. Now, was that you said that center beach class? That was with Will, wasn't it? Um, Will actually wasn't there. Um, his, the guy's name was Dan. Is Dan Smith? He's, oh, okay. he's one of the cadre now for um, for centrifuge. Gotcha. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, the assistant instructors were. Brian and I don't know his real name, but it's Bones. I don't know. See, I don't know who Bones is. I only, I literally dip my pinky toe in the tactical games, the tactical side anymore. Yeah, um, I think Bones's IG handle is Lone Star Prep or something to that effect. Um, but literally, it's a really skinny dude who looks like a skeleton. Oh no, well, I mean, makes sense if you call him Bones, right? Yeah, yeah, that ain't too bad. Now, what do you think of the Tim Heron class? Tim Heron class was like the first, it was the first step of getting me out of, uh, out of a plateau once I hit master. And honestly, it was already at the time, it was, I think it was the, it was about the year and a half mark where I decided, yeah, I need another class. Um, so, I mean, fundamentals, I was okay. Movement, I was okay, but I didn't necessarily know what I was doing. Like I basically stumbled my way to master and then Tim was was kind of pushing. He's like, hey, here's what I'm seeing. This is what I think you can do to make yourself uh, that much better. And what was that? Pretty much just solidifying uh, unconscious things into conscious thoughts, and like actually knowing uh, what was gone, going on. So like I could analyze some things, but I didn't understand how to treat them. Mm, gotcha. <clears throat> Now you now, what was your progression? Were you like in B for a while, or did you like start lower than that? Um, hmm. I, so I was C class for those six months, uh, starting off USPSA, going into carry optics. I think it was about a month later that I made B, something like that. Uh, I made A a little bit before my one year mark, master my one and a half year mark, and then a little bit after three years is when I made GM. Fair enough. It's I don't I think know. for I think for most people uh, that that deep dive into the game, that's that's typically what you see. And then you have and then you have crazy dudes who dive who go face first into every classifier that do it in eight months. Yeah, they are, and they're able to connect on it or something. I don't know. I don't know about you. My trigger finger ain't super fast. Mine isn't either. I mean, my my fastest split was sixteen, but I be regularly splitting around eighteen twenty. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I don't know. I feel that nowadays it's just like you got to use sometimes hero or zero some of these fuckers to get them to stick. I mean, you'd be surprised because the the very last classifier that I need that I needed to make GM it was a repeat. It was part of my uh, eight that uh, was not counted. So it was the two of eight that didn't count. Mm -hmm. um, and so. I actually got a tip from Dozzy. It was like, look, dude, you already have the speed. Just shoot alphas. And most people are commenting, is like, dude, that didn't necessarily look so fast. But if you looked at reaction time to the beep and then just simply shooting through the entire thing, it ended up faster than, than what everyone expected. Because that was the classifier where you're standing behind the Bianchi barricade with like, what, six targets or? Um, five paper and two steel. 
Oh, okay. This is a different one. Same kind of setup, though. It's an it's a ninety nine series one. Yeah. Back when you know production and carry optics were still on the same level. Yeah. And then I got it after the uh, after the alt, some of the classifiers went up. Oh yeah, the the because everything was too easy, right? Yeah. So I mean, especially on a one forty mag, come on, you got to bump everything up. Oh yeah. Exactly. So, um, what'd you get out of Ray, uh, JJ's class? JJ's class was was more of what is your current skill? Because we, we did start off with some, with some fundamentals work, um, and it was kind of studying how he treats um, how he treats a course, um, and it's primarily field course types of things. So, if if you position your body this way, this is how it's going to affect either positively or negatively. Um, this is how how he does trigger work and a lot a lot of his trigger work and transition stuff is very it's very quick from the start mm -hmm. but otherwise it's all right this is your current skill how do i improve you to the next point that kind of thing gotcha so a lot of big did you get a lot of individual focus it was okay. yeah so i think day, day one pretty much every single field course that we ran it was everyone everyone runs something we got everything scored up and then as everything's being scored, JJ is talking to you about some of the finer points that you can improve on. And then preferably, he also wants you to do a video. That way you get every single piece uh, of improvement that you possibly can. And, well, and, and if you start and you start to self-analyze, like, hey, this is what I noticed for myself doing X, Y, and Z. And it's like, all right, here's some ABCs on other things that you may or may not have noticed that you didn't see through talk with me. Mm -hmm. Now... You didn't, you haven't taken JJ's intro class or level one class. So I didn't take his fundamental, like fundamentals oriented one where he really deep dives more into uh, trigger prep um, and then the whole click bang thing. Mm -hmm. uh, A, C, C, A. Yeah. Um, tag control. Yep. Three step entries, that kind of thing. So did you feel behind not taking that at all with other students? Because I know Cal, I think Calvin took both classes at one point. Calvin has taken courses with JJ before, but he hasn't taken any of the revisions until now. Okay. Did you so, feel behind or anything? I didn't. Um, so every now and then I do train with uh, T and Ken who have taken his uh, intro course. So I was able to kind of pick up some things uh, from them. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the way that JJ wants you to learn is that if you can teach it, you've learned it. So they kind of taught me some things that I learned that they learned from the JJ class. I taught them some things that I learned from the Tim Aaron course. Gotcha. Okay. So you didn't feel okay. So it's not like you were missing out on you're well, you were already a master. So it's kind of hard to you already have I wasn't missing out on too much. Gotcha. Did you give them power rings to start the day off though? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, hey. I don't know. He can pack away food. I'm jealous of him. Yeah, I mean, to, that, I guess I guess like T and Ken were constantly feeding him because he got all the donuts with the chocolate on top of it and peanuts. That's a very Filipino thing, by the way. Peanuts, boom, they want it. Oh, okay, now I'm, I'm going to write that down. Yeah, so if JJ's in your area, don't glaze donuts with chocolate on it and peanuts. Got it. Now, now I've got the the JJ tracker. I mean, if you feed JJ, you're in, you're in, you're primarily in his good graces. I mean, but there is such thing as bad food though, too. One is they're not. There are good things and bad things. So as long as you don't feed them bad food. Exactly. So, I mean, we've digressed a little bit, but it's okay. Um, that's that's what we do on the A-Zone podcast. So why aren't we gonna, just going to do it now? Well, I mean, yeah, we got It's a conversation. That's all it is. It's just a fun little. But um, so you're shooting, you're shooting glonks, don't you? You haven't yeah. given up on the, the plastic perfection. It's right here. Yeah, except you went longer than you used to be. You got an extended. Yeah, this year I decided to go to a 34. I just, I really wanted to toy around with the idea of, okay, the frame's practically the same. What if I went with a longer slide and barrel, just adding that one, one and a half ounces to the front, see how much that affects uh, muzzle flip and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. it, I, ended, I ended up liking it. So long-term long term for USPSA, I am going to stay on a 34. Yeah, because you ordered a 34 holster anyway, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Courtesy, of, G, courtesy of GX Products. Now, I don't like to pick on Leif, but I have to pick on Leif. How long did you wait for it? Um, I ordered after Nationals, and I think I ordered it November. Okay. And then, and then it eventually arrived to me in, like, February. 
No. No, because the JJ class was I got it during the JJ class. It was the first weekend of March. Okay. So that's not I mean it's not the best, but at least you got it, right? I mean, you know, Leif is a one-man shop, so it's an expected wait time that's long, especially given his new popularity after nationals and a lot of groups uh using his holsters. So mm-hmm. it's it, it's totally understandable. And totally worth the wait, in my opinion. In fact, I actually have two. Oh well, so you, you used your coupon and then you bought a set. You bought matching ones, or no, 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 no. Seven? So so this is a seventeen holster that I was using before, um, and then I just and then one I decided to go with the thirty four. I ordered it up, and then I just have, if I could find it somewhere, I have. I was using a blade tech for uh, for thirty fours. Right on. Nothing wrong with the blade tech though. Blade, blade techs are nice. They're they're durable. They don't crack like almost at all. Mm-hmm. Unless, you know, you actually sit on it. Have you sat on one before? Mm, I think I've collided into a, into a metal wall once, but, I mean, it's still held together. Fair enough. Yep. I mean, I it, like- has, it has one of the nicer draws for, like, a readily available uh, holster. I mean, Koi literally describes it as a hot dog down a hallway. <laughs> well, yeah. They're legal. As long as you put them on a boss hanger with, you know, not a lot of big spacers, you're okay. Yeah, or just use the one that's at, like, IDPA height. Oh, yep. There, there are some people that still like that. Yeah, I don't know. I love being able to actually run around on a stage, though, like ROing or resetting. It's nice not having a bungee cord attached. Yep. Or, yeah, because I remember who showed me that first. I think it was Rob Epifania had the bungee cord on his old Blade Tex until he got his vice. I think he was running. Mm, no, I don't remember what he was running. Yeah, I, I I love it. I love running around. It's so nice to like, oh damn, the steel fell over. Hang on, <sighs> run down the bay. Yeah, it sucks when your bay is like forty yards long deep, and you're like, Ugh. Spe- speaking of a forty yards deep bay, um, I actually had to reset a popper twice because of uh, popper calibration at nationals. Oh lord! And that 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 lever came in real handy. So I was just you know sprinting as hard as I can, reset the popper the same way that I tried to. And calibration happened. And right after that point, I was banned from resetting poppers. Oh, there you go. Now, what kind of <laughs> poppers were they? Like, do you know who made what kind of who made the popper? Uh no, but I know it's a full size. Oh, okay. Those are JJ targets. Uh, Double- I, I won't dive into that. That's that's already been burnt out. Yeah. Just beating okay. a horse, just beating a horse with a stick again. Well, fair enough. Now uh you're using what Google pouches? Yeah, I use Google Rebus. I like them. I like the adjustability on them. Just every now and then, like if I if I hit it really hard, then like it kind of full, comes back a little bit, so I have to pull on it a little bit just to get it back into position. Oh, that's nice because those are on a wheel, aren't they? Like you. Uh, they're them. on a they're on a ball joint. Oh, okay. So Jared, uh, Jared also used these, mm-hmm. or yeah. Jared Clinton. Yeah, I bet Jared Fox has used them at some point too, but he breaks everything. Well, I mean, when you have hands the size of like pig's feet, like yeah, yeah, you're gonna break everything eventually. Oh yeah, I liked my CR speeds until they started spinning. And then I was like, "Yep, these got to go." What are you on now? Double alpha? Yeah, the XI pouch. Might as well if I was gonna go to open at some point. Might as well have pouches that are gonna last the test of time. I mean, you're using the same pouches as the national champion, so why not? Right. I mean. Uh... The price. I'm like, let's be honest. You can't argue with that. No, I can't. No. They're they're nice pouches. Well, I mean, the CEO national champion, he uses uh, Google Rebus pouches, though. Yeah, that's why I'm using them. Yeah. No, you used them before that, though. Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, at one point, Google Rebus pouches were the same cost as XI pouches. So. Yep. And then they bounced up. That's what happens. Your your product gets more popular, and then you got to bounce your price up. Yeah. Yeah, it's the bait and switch, right? Well, it's law, supply, and demand. So, well, true. That's true as well. So, it's so depressing. So, now that you're GM, what are your kind of goals right now? Winning a major. That's really all it is at this point. Yeah. How close were you? You shot double tap, didn't you? I shot double tap, but my gosh, I was seventy eight percent away from max, and then Dazi was ninety like ninety four point four. Like you look at that massive difference as a GM is like, damn, I have a long way to go. Yeah, because like I was I was fourth carry optics. The the GM that's ahead of me, Alex Acosta, 
was only 79%. God, he got smoked that bad by both of them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, to, suffice to say that people who have won national championships or placed number two are absolute monsters. Oh, yeah, we already knew, we knew da, like what two years ago, Dazi was going to be a monster. He just had to go to nationals. Yeah. If you, if, if, if you, now everyone should know who Dazi is because he's actually been on a podcast, which was really surprising to me. Yes. Go, go see the Casual Shooters podcast if you haven't seen that episode. It was, I didn't know he started in PRS though. That's kind of cool. Mm, I think so. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember the details of it. I just know that he used to shoot production before and he's slaying bodies in, in carry optics. Mm hmm. He is. Ooh, I got the drinking burps. This is going to be great. Yeah. Oh, what are you drinking? I, we totally forgot to mention what you were drinking. Yeah. All right. So I am drinking two scotches because uh, because I am a guest. Uh, I have Jura. This is one of my this is one of my recent buys, and then the special one is Brooklodic, the classic Lottie. I actually bought this um, with the intention of I only get to open this bottle when I make GM. Okay. And it's not like like oh I have to make GM now. It's like hey, this is a celebration whiskey. That's its only purpose. And you're drinking it in fancy glasses, so it's all okay. Well, I mean, I am a bit of a whiskey snob, so yeah, yeah. Those those are snifters, right? Is that what we call those? They are Glen Cairn glasses, but yeah, they serve the same purpose as like a brandy snifter. Okay, uh, and I'm being lame, and I'm just drinking water. I guess I'll I be am... I'll be the Sasquatch and just drink water. I will let you be the responsible one. Well, will you I, be my? Do I need to get on one knee and ask? Will you be my Uber tonight? I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna watch you leave the screen and go back to the other room. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you made it home okay. <laughs> All that matters. Yep. So you want to win a major now? What's your major schedule look like then for the rest? Um. Of the year? So earlier this year, I had uh, what was it? I had Texas State Open, double tap championship, and Dragons Cup. Uh, later on this year, June, I have Oklahoma uh, section. August, I have Area 3. September, I have Carry Optics Nationals and Area 4. October is North Texas Open and something else. Oh, Infinity Open. And then November is Louisiana Gator. Oh, you do have a big, uh, you do have a big pool. Are you carpooling with anyone? <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see. I've been nice on the carpool list before, but I'm also the guy that drives people ammo and their heavy stuff if they're flying. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, you're gonna drive back to nationals again then? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's a it's eleven hours, so probably leaving the house at like four o'clock in the morning from Dallas, and then hopefully I don't nearly die on the way back this time. Mm -hmm. That's why you plan an extra day to sleep. What are you gonna you'd shoot AM PM AM, right? Uh, this year, I actually get to shoot PMA and PM. Ooh, okay. Because I signed up on time. There you go. Now, did you have a pre-registration slot, or did you have to wait for open registration? I had to wait for I had to wait for open registration, and I was I actually had I actually studied up the numbers that were um, for slots that were available when I signed up. Uh, okay, when I checked registration the night before, the only remaining slots out of because there's uh. 12, no, 15 squads, I think. Okay. Something like that for Care Optics National since it's in Talladega. Um, 12 people per squad. And if it was just, if you excluded Super Squad, that kind of thing, there were only 110 slots available. So imagine trying to fight for a slot that fills up within 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you, there's 30,000 USPSA members at any given year. So, yeah. Imagine cramming those people, the people who want to go, into 110 slots. Yeah, this this is risky. Yeah, so if you weren't if you weren't there at seven central, you got screwed. Oh yeah. Yep, absolutely. Unless your staff, for some reason, could get the freaking late staff. <laughs> but some, I don't. Per personally, for me, staffing a match is not something I want to do. I wouldn't. I was thinking about it, but then I just ran out of vacation time to guarantee for it. So, well, I mean, you have to burn like what at least eight days because there's yeah. two, there's two for this two days for the staff match and then three days for the main match and then account for travel. Yeah, you're at least at least seven full days. Exactly. Well, it was interesting because if it was if I did shoot Carry Optics Nationals on staff, I would have been shooting on my birthday. 
Ooh. Yeah. I mean, it would have been an awesome birthday present to go shoot nationals, but be like, yeah, that's a long time to be from home in Talladega. But it'd been okay. And there's not a lot, and honestly, there's not a lot of quality food in Talladega. Nope. You're going to random truck stops with hobos, right? Yeah. It's either McDonald's, Popeyes, or a decent Mexican place. Oh, and Sonic. Oh, okay. Got to have the. Hmm. <sighs> And maybe maybe a Waffle House. Was there no no Waffle Houses? Mm, there's the Huddle House, which is like <laughs> I don't know what the equivalent of it is. I guess it's like IHOP, but I have been told to not enjoy going to a Huddle House. Okay, good to know. Sorry, sorry if you're if you're a Huddle House employee. <laughs> yeah, I mean it'd be like the one in a million shot, right? If they're listening to this, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like Nationals, I definitely plan on cooking. So yeah. now are you you're gonna get an Airbnb or that's probably the plan. Smart or, plan, I guess. I guess if I want to drop more cash of Verbo, if Verbo even works out there. Oh yeah, the yeah, the the BR the, the, the fancy the fancy Airbnb. Yeah. Cause I got yeah. So what does your training schedule look like? That's actually a good question because even I don't know. Like um, if there isn't a match on the weekend, I'll just do something. Like I'm not, I'm not particularly planning for something in the, like, usually it's some kind of fundamentals thing. And then maybe once a month I'll do field course. Yeah. But otherwise most, I guess half the time I'm live fire practicing half the time I'm, uh, doing something live fire on the range. And it's usually isolated of one to two skills. Yeah, because honestly, the brain will, you just got to stick to one thing or your brain's going to be, oh, let's go do this. Let's my my do brain this. automatically melts into doing something else after like after five right. minutes. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, exactly. Yeah. Now, what do you dry fire once a day, you know, five times a week or? Usually like, I usually dry fire whenever I feel like it. So like when I decide to get hot and heavy with it, it's at least three days a week for yeah. like 15 minutes of like actual uh, dry fire practice it's usually spread out over the course of like 40 minutes mm -hmm. gotcha now well, this is a great question especially after you're shooting dragon's cup you shot in all one day didn't you i shot two days oh okay. so, PM, so, AM. so you were smart you signed up for the two-day match you say that either way it was hot no matter what you, everyone was getting burnt and actually the mornings were decent the afternoons were brutal yeah so like i shot pm am and like dude if you didn't have at least like three uh, three packets of Propel, you were going down. We had one guy who went down with heat stroke, and there was an ambulance on site. I was like, "Oh, damn. Okay, yep." Did they have the ambulance on standby beforehand? <laughs> it's Odessa, dude. I don't know. Yeah, D dirt. D Texas is Dust Bowl, right? Uh, yeah, it's West Texas, so yeah, it's an oil field out there. So yeah, yeah. So how? How were you able to maintain your focus um, during that match? Being positive and uh, a lady in our squad was reminding everyone to keep drinking water. That's how I was able to maintain focus. It's like, you know, yeah, I should probably do that. Well, that's a good thing because a lot of people forget to drink. Yeah. So, I mean, like if you, you need like Gatorade Propels and like these Pedialyte Sports, these things are amazing. Like they have a lemon, they have a lemon lime that tastes pretty good, but like the fruit punch one tastes almost exactly like Kool Aid, like right. Kool Aid Red. All right, we're drinking some Kool Aid then. So yeah, they had some pretty cool. I think it seems like accommodations for for that match, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, the match was excellent. Like I plan to go every single year when I can. Yeah, that's one of those that fills up pretty quick too. It does. If um. Hmm. I don't remember the length of time it took for it to, for the match to fill up, but I remember practice were breaking. Mm -hmm. Like the first, like the first year, which is last year, like people were cautious about signing up because of COVID. But uh, now that no one really cares, uh, it actually filled up pretty fast for this year. Well, that's good. I think it was. I think if I tracked it right, it was about two hours. Something like that. It didn't take long, but that's nope. good though. Yeah. squatting was a squatting was a pain in the butt you had to be on top of your game to get on the squad you wanted so oh yeah especially if you wanted to squad with people that you like yeah or, or people you don't like i don't know who'd you squad with anyway um a couple of g's in the squad marco cabahook he's a pcc guy that i hope you have on your show someday 
um, Alice Acosta, Emmett Reed, uh, and a couple of others smattering over the people from uh, Austin and some other areas. We had one Supervel employee and uh, Mike Wong. Oh, so the guy with the tank top, right? Uh, that was Marco. Oh, this isn't, oh, I thought there was a pistol Supervel guy who wore a tank top and it was like you could just see his tan line. Uh, was he not on your squad? No. Makes me Be sad it. then. But they, all, they both have great tans. Mm, a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't. So John, John's from Superville. If you're watching the show, thank you so much. Did he save your butt? Uh, yes. Was it your ammo again? Yeah. No. Oh. Well, so what's wrong with your ammo? <laughs> um, I'm not sure what it was, but some of the ammo was underpowered, so I ended up having uh, failures to extract the casing. Oh. You're using a stock uh, recoil spring on that, aren't you? I use stock. I okay. So important thing about all, almost all my Glocks, all the internals are stock. So stock striker spring, stock recoil spring, everything. Damn. Even the mounting screws. Uh, no. So I actually, because it's the one that's available, I use CH Precision Weapon Systems. Yeah. I just had a lisp there. That's how you know I'm having a good drink. There you go. Get your drink on. Mm -hmm. This is exactly how A zone devolves. Oh, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it on the rails somewhat. No, but, uh, let it go. Yeah, let it go. Oh, don't, don't make me sing, let it go. <laughs> I could, but I won't. I don't want to embarrass myself. My singing's bad in the shower. I don't want to embarrass myself on the whole internet. <laughs> not, while, not while I'm drinking. Oh, fair enough. Um, so, what was your favorite stage of Dragon's Cup? Uh, the one that I actually had a GM level score on because everything else was like either I had a mic or or I had an ammo issue. So um, I think that was stage eight, if I remember correctly, and I ended up placing 94% of Christian. Yeah, that's kind of sad that Max wasn't able to shoot it. Um, quite frankly, I don't. There was a rumor mill going on, but nothing that connected together where people were saying the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's not fun. I just wish he was there. I would have loved to see him shoot against Christian again because Max beat Christian at what, area six. Yeah. And then JJ was right behind. Yeah. And then after that, everyone got spanked. Yeah. Did Do I don't think Dazi shot Dragon's Cup, did he? Dazi didn't because it was his son's graduation day. Yeah, it's kind of hard to go shoot in Odessa on your. <laughs> I mean, oh, yes. Okay, so the thing that you need to understand about Dazi is that he always puts his kids first before his shooting. So that's the reason why he didn't bother popping up. So I think for the remainder of his schedule, it's only going to be Area 3 and Carry Optics Nationals. That, that won't be bad. He'll still shred. Absolutely. I see Dazi. Now, how many locals a month do you shoot? Mm, at least three, oh, I think. Okay. Yeah, so two, two of them over at XMG, which is up in the Sherman area, and then Cross Timbers which holds it in Waxahashi at Extreme Tactics, or ETTS. Oh, okay. So th those are my favorite matches. XMG has very, it's very beginner friendly. And then Cross Timbers puts on some fairly technical mat uh, stages. That's always good then. Yeah, so there's, there's a decent mix. Um, I do want to toss things up, up a little bit because I do have uh, a 3D stage builder kit. And I also want to improve the quality of some other uh, matches. Yeah, even if it's one stage at a time, right? You know, get people yeah. th get people thinking. Well, I mean, most everyone puts on twenty at least twenty four round field courses for their stages. So I'm like, okay, can we toss in like some fifteen to eighteen and like twelve round stages somewhere? Yeah, and it's really I think because that is around here too. We're all doing lower long field court long courses around here. Yeah, because everyone like people are paying because they want to shoot. Right. It was like, you know, there's a variety of other stuff that is also out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and to also speak on my stage building kind of stuff. Um, I think it was, yeah, it was 2020 August, sweaty hot day. And we ended up predicting that it was going to be like a super hot day. So we, uh, a buddy and I, who hasn't been shooting lately, unfortunately, um, we came up with the idea is like, hey, what if he designed or like set up all six stages to have a goal of under 120 rounds like see like let's just see where that goes mm -hmm. and then uh we got everything made we consulted with the match directors for the local matches like okay here's an idea 
Um, and we'd like to go and put on these stages. We need some help doing setup. It's like, all right, fine. Here are some modifications that we want to do. It's like, all right, cool. If that makes for better efficiency, let's do it. Uh, any changes that need to be made on the ground for to avoid uh, DQs and whatnot, great. Um, and as a thank you for everyone that decided to participate in that match, I put out a challenge of whoever gets raw time champ for high cap and low cap, you get 100 primers if you win that. So oh, did you did you win your primers back? No. Oh, sad face. Yeah, it went to a PCC guy and a production guy. Nothing wrong with that, though. It is because it went to a PCC guy. Well, it's just like if it went to an open guy. With an open guy, it'd be more understandable. Oh yeah, he needs some primers because they gotta they gotta reload that nine millimeter brass. You mean thirty eight super? Oh, is that more prominent where you're at? It's 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 a nine major kind of place up here. Oh really? In the north, it's nine major where you're at. Mm-hmm. It's thirty eight where I'm at. Well, you do kind of live near Gordon, Texas, the land of infinity. I don't really consider two and a half hours close by, but yeah, I guess it's in, it's in Texas. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Well, it's like, it takes longer to get through Texas than it does to get from the tip of Texas to Canada. Yeah, pretty pretty much. And if not, you're watching some dead get dragged across the road or or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guess Texas pretty much is the land of 38. Yeah. Or or bull armory guns, right? Right, Blanton. Mm, Blanton's actually mm, no. There's one other guy. Three. Yeah, three other guys with bull guns, but Blanton's the only active one shooting yeah. a bull. We've got one local guy who shoots a bull, and it's it's okay. As long as he enjoys it, that's what matters. Exactly. That's the whole point. Yeah, and then John Chinchin just wipes everyone off the ground. When he's having a good day. <laughs> Is there a bad day for him? Oh, yes. Sorry, John. You do have bad days. Hi, John. My name's Matt. <laughs> you don't know each other already? Oh, wait. I can't just assume that, though. That's the internet. The power of the internet, though, it's kind of amazing who you can meet. Yeah. You talk to some people, you don't. And it's like, okay, cool. I follow you. You follow me. We don't necessarily talk much, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's just dependent on when they post or how much they post. And... Yeah. I mean, I'm also an introvert, so I don't talk much, that much to people anyway. Oh, fair enough. Oh, da, da, da. oh, so yeah, we're talking about match stages. So yeah, at least up here, we do like, we try for 24 round field courses. The problem in the rules is, to design like a medium course and a short, well, a medium course and like a short field course, it's kind of restrictive. It is. And it's, that's why a lot of people don't like it. Or who's going to argue, is that four positions or is that three positions? Because a medium course can only be three positions. Yeah, because it can also be positions or views, right? Right. Yeah. So like the one, I guess one of the few political things that I want changed in the rules is like, hey, can we like, change up some stuff for like field courses uh, or medium courses where like we remove the whole positions thing. Like what if we did, let's just say like a five position, 14 round course, something like that. It'd be interesting. It, it would definitely change the flavor of how we view USPSA stages. Well, yeah. So you could actually put on a medium course and it actually be like decent flow and it wouldn't just be like a hoser fest. Exactly. And then a, a, a short course isn't just a freaking standard stage or standing yeah. in a box. I, yeah. I don't I don't know. Do you like boxes? I don't like boxes. I'm not a fan of boxes. I mean, unless you can stand on them because you're really short, like T. I'm 6'1". Hey, you got no problem with height then. It, it sucks for low courts. I'll say that. Yeah, or, or Koi's last match is match director and you all shoot a Cooper tunnel. I think we actually put him up to that. You put you had him put him. <laughs> like like literally like literally we named we named the last uh, match they did as de- match director as Coy's last stand and like as an annoyance we did we did a Cooper Tunner. Yeah, the, I haven't seen one yet. In at least on the, in your area. Yeah, on the on the ground, I haven't seen a Cooper Tunnel. They changed they changed the play a little bit, but you just have to be considerate of anyone that's a senior. Yeah, just don't make them get on the ground, right? Just keep it less than like twelve rounds that you need to do in the Cooper Tunnel. Yeah, fair enough. If, if you do like six, then, <laughs> then it becomes more socially acceptable. Yeah, just, just get them down there and shoot through it. Yeah, and besides, most most of them are shooting high cap anyway. Yeah, them and their PCCs, right? <laughs> Actually, mm, I think the majority of them here are either shooting limited or carry optics. 
They can still see their iron sights? I thought they were old. They, they can change up their lenses. Like some of them have those bifocals where, you know, you just tilt your head up. It's like, oh, I have my reading glasses on. Oh, fair Boom. enough. Boom, there you go. My iron sights are right there. That's fair enough. So we did get some listener questions. I would want, I do want to go through those real, while we're, that while we're de- degraded down into random uh, blabberings about old people and their vision. I'm willing to bet all the ones from A Zone are all hate mail. Well, no, wait. I mean, unless you count the ones yourself. So, <laughs> so you got to explain how you had good luck with this raffle. Yeah, right. So, like, I can't win a major match yet. The highest percent I've ever gotten in a ma- in a major match is like ninety is like ninety one percent. But like, almost every single match that I've been to that has a raffle, I win. And like the recent Dragons Cup, there it wasn't the main raffle where like we used to take tickets and that kind of thing. There was like a squad raffle, and I still walked away with one hundred fifty bullets. So, there you go. Whose bullets yeah. were those? Uh, Summit City. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, double tap, I walked away with an open gun mount, so that's obviously a clue that I need to jump in the open. Yep, you got to. You got to have... Is it an RTS-2 mount? It is an RTS-2 mount because everything else was a thumb rest or a Seymour slide ride mount. And I was like, I want new technology. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want a slide ride. Yeah, I mean, shoot, last year, last year's double tap, I won a, uh, I won a gun box. And the year before that is when I won my 550 press. Wow, you're reloading on a 550. How how do your fingers feel when you move the 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 indexer? I mean, I just make it all. Uh, I just make it all <laughs> elbows, actually. Oh, all elbows. Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Surprisingly, like I'm not hurting, but all the, at the same token, it's like I wish I had more capacity to load like a thousand rounds in a night rather than like willingly doing 300. Yeah. I, I kind of wish if I could have redone it, I'd much rather have gotten like an 1100 instead of the 750 that I bought. Because by the time I upgraded all the 750 with all the whiz bang parts it needed, it, it's like the price of an 1100. I would have loved to go to a 750, um, but there was just, <laughs> no one had a press available in 2020. So when I got that basic, I got a basic 550. So it doesn't have the auto prime bar. It doesn't have the pattern measure. I had to buy all that stuff. And then the money that I spent ended up being the same price as a 550C. Yep. So a little bit annoying to, but hey, at least I have something that's a little bit, that's a lot faster than a single stage. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you're not buying factory ammo. On occasion, I'll buy 550, or I'll buy factory ammo just when I'm feeling lazy. And that's how I felt for this year. And it bit me in the ass. Mm -hmm. No bueno. So we did get this one question. What is it like bearing the weight of being the only good shooter on the A zone? It's not my question, though. Feels good. <laughs> does it? Yeah, it does. It's okay. Connor's cutting rust out of some rust bucket. So, yeah, I mean, so the guy's a programmer. So he always has to be doing something. And he sleeps, he practically sleeps very late. So, yeah, it's understandable that he wants something else to do aside from just shooting and programming. That's fair enough. And Koi just po- posts dog reels. I mean, if that doesn't cheer up your day, I don't know what will. That's true, too. I mean, I do enjoy most of them. They're, and mostly, cow- corgi. They're mostly corgis, which you share. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's true. Corgis are legit. If you don't have a corgi or want a corgi, uh, go buy a corgi. Well, do your research first. It's like buying an open gun. Do your research first. Yes. I don't have uh, a dog. All I've ever had is fish. Fish? How, how many times have they killed themselves? Zero. Okay. You don't have any beta fish? Do you have beta fish? I used to, and then I think I don't remember how that one died. Did you not feed it? Uh, no. I got. I always fed it. I think it was just. I think I ended up shocking it due to not keeping enough of the old water available that they're used to. Uh, so I, I guess climatic shock is what killed it. Gotcha. So then this one is from our good old buddy Brian over at Red's Dot. Uh, How you do you, doing, Brian? Hopefully, he's doing okay. But um, he, he better be. He better. That's true. Now that now that he's back to shooting, go, uh, Gasson's greatest creation, Glocks. Yeah, Glo- Glonks. Yeah, Gen five twenty tw- uh, twos. Yep. So, do you think that the class was that classification system works in general? Why or why not? It would if people weren't cheating. Well, that's true too. That that's pretty much my only answer. If people. If people do honest answers, then yes, it is absolutely working. But otherwise, but otherwise, now that you have people tablet cheating, it's not. Tablet cheating or setting up the wrong classifier or 
Yeah. I mean, so, like, I've, at least with setting up with, oh, um, with like plugging in the wrong classifier by accident because one of one of our local GMs, he would have been GM earlier if he had been plugged in as 2101 instead of 2201. So, okay. yeah. Um, I mean, oh, at, they, at, uh, at least that one's an easy fix, but like setting up so that things are smaller or the wrong distance, then yeah, then that's a big issue. Especially the ones where the or the uh, where the no shoot overlays are important, you know, having all your your lines lined up and your perforations good. I mean, it's literally it's literally all dotting your eyes, crossing your t's. So, mm-hmm. especially if you're yeah, you're gonna set up those tape so, measure, having the right length walls, whatnot. Yeah. Now you gotta worry about walls because most people's walls are too long for that class. Those classifiers. Yeah, I think most people's walls are usually the eight foot ones. Yeah, but they're not traditionally eight feet long. They're usually like an eight foot board plus an extra foot, uh, like an extra width. Either that or they're all welded metal that are a little bit too short. Oh, that too, yeah. That's that's pretty much all the walls in my area. They're all welded metal. Yeah, and they're all painted blue, right? Or is that just the fault lines? Mm, the ones up in XMG, the fault lines are blue. Most everywhere else, the fault lines are red. Oh, okay. Now, so Timmy wants to know, why do stock blocks suck? Why do you have to modify your tempo? Ooh, because he likes them thick. Speaking heavy. of, speaking of, I'm selling mine. You're gonna sell your tan your tanfo? Yeah, I have a tanfo. I I couldn't mentally click with it, so that's why I'm selling it. You gonna sell it to Koi or Calvin? I've tried selling to them. They won't buy it. Is it not? Is it not ugly brown like like Calvin's are? It is the baby poo brown one. <laughs> oh, then why doesn't he want it? <laughs> because he has two functioning stock threes. Oh, fair enough. What do you have? Is it a, a stock two then? It's a stock two. So, yeah. like, we, I think I've talked to him before, and he said that once, like, these tampos break, he'll probably just switch to Beretta. Oh, so he really is going to be Ray, Ray Ray Jacuzzi. Yep. I, it's nothing wrong with that, though. I mean, he also has that Turkish Beretta clone. So, yeah, even more Ray Ray Jacuzzi. Yeah. If he turns it into an open gun. Actually shoots it in open. He's more he's more interested in his European rifles than than getting more guns for USPSA. Oh, that's true. That's that's always thing. So so I mean, go ahead. I mean, there's more value in those than a USPSA gun. Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, he loves collecting his random Russian rifles and other things. Well, now that they're no longer available. Yeah, and that, yeah, now they just went up by what twenty percent <laughs> at least. Yeah. I'd probably say fifty at this point. Yeah. So Timmy also wants to know, would a tricked out CZ or Tampo make you better? No. Because they're not they're not gas ounce perfection. Exactly. Now, do you put a little do you put like a thug plug or like some plastic thing in the butt? When I say stock lock, I mean it. Oh, look at that massive hole. All, all the mags. Phrasing. Massive holes. Okay, so like here's here's my philosophy on modifying guns. If you want to do it, go ahead and do it. But otherwise, like for me, the less I modify it, the mentally better I am because that means less things I have to buy. Yeah, true. It's, it saves me that much more money for super expensive primers. True. Now, have you ever had a mag caught in that little lip? Um, if anything, very rare, and that's when I was just dicking around. Fair enough. Oh, th- that said, I have one, aside from that 19 that I showed you, um, I have one more modified Glock. It's a Glock 35 that I use for limited, and it's literally the only things I've added are Vogel sights, Dawson Ice Magwell, and a Glock store pure tungsten guide rod. I mean, shoot, that, to be fair, though, that's more modified than my carry optics gun. So, yeah. You have to tame 40 somehow. Yeah, with a, with a lock flashlight, right? No. No, does it not no, work? That, that it works. I don't care for it. Yeah. So, like, I prefer just having this profile at the front mm-hmm. because I do a finger front and trigger guard grip. That's the way. Yeah. Is it because your fingers are too meaty? You got to get the finger up there. No, no. Okay, so that's actually a good discussion point. Um, so doing a traditional saw grip like this, where like, you know, you have all four of your fingers underneath uh, the trigger guard, mm-hmm. I end up having too much tension along this portion of my forearm. And so I can't, like, I've 
tried to even get through like a 50 round uh, live fire session and I just couldn't at the time. So I said, all right, I need other methods to figure out how to do it. So I was just kind of messing around. And then I looked up Yong Lee's video on uh, how to do the finger forward. And I also watched Grafell's uh, match videos of where he does finger forward, front front guard. And then Grafell said that he does it for endurance. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna try this. And I actually did that in the middle of the match and it just ended up clicking. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So it's it took it takes a lot more refinement doing that grip style than a traditional style grip or a vocal style grip. But for some people, it works. You see a lot of European champions doing it. It works for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. It works. So I don't know. It's I think who who did I? I think I saw it from Lena first. But not oh, Lena where she was do, where she was doing the uh, the two fingers in front of the trigger guard. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shoot, I can't even do that. So I mean, the fact that she's able to do it, good for her. Yeah. She got them dainty fingers. Yeah, not me. My hands are inflexible. Yeah. What do you wear, and, like an XL Plus glove? Something like that, yeah. Wait, you don't, you don't know what gloves are. You live in Texas, right? What are gloves? <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah, I wear XL gloves. I mean, I was in marching band, so you're required to wear gloves. That way your hands don't really show, and it's part of the uniform, so... Okay, so what'd you play in marching band? Trombone. Woot woot, trombone brothers. Yeah. Fun fact, three of the A-Zone members uh, played trombone, or played trombone through high school. What is it? Not Koi, right? It's all the Asians. Oh. Would Connor do then? I uh, I think it was trumpet, which is oh. like the, typ the typical guy thing. Yeah. No, those are like well, those are the like the, the popular guys, right? The popular guys who are in band, they play trumpet. No, the right? popular guys in band were always playing saxophone and percussion. Uh, that's true too. If they're in concert band. Now now has any did anything from marching band transfer over to you and just shooting? Um I used to take cadence because I had a I had a pretty decent hold on um on tempo. Mm -hmm. So like sometimes I would shoot like an actual tempo to targets. Um, but other than that, it's just having, it's remembering how posture works into how to, how you actually see things or how you actually sound. Mm -hmm. Um, because especially with the trombone, right, you have a long waving slide. I mean, that's not really much different from having your, uh, your hands at full extension with a gun, right? Mm -hmm. So how you step simply matters and how that translates into either sound or shooting. Oh yeah. Yeah. You gotta... It's interesting. I never thought about it. Like I never thought about transition, you know, translating using the trombone, like holding your pistol out. So I literally just thought of that right now. <laughs> hey, there you go. But there's nothing wrong with that. Um, drunk thoughts, people. Drunk, th yeah, drunk, yeah, exactly. But um, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like I liked marching band, even though marching like band camp always sucked. I didn't, I didn't really have like a true band camp like you had, like you explained in a previous episode. It was. It was like one week in June where everyone got started to get to know each other. And then a full month of August, like marching and getting at least the initial like portion of, uh, of a routine down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We weren't fancy enough to have multiple routines throughout the year. We just had the one that we, we prepared for festival. So, yeah, well, then we, we spent like what, one week we're learning like a senior show for the seniors. And that was about it. Yeah, mine mine went heavy into the competitions for Bands of America and UIL. Yeah, I, although I did watch. I don't know what it. I don't know what stirred it up on my YouTube. It must have been listening to me, and then it just started playing clips from the movie Drumline. It's a great movie. If anyone's actually remembers that movie from like two thousand three, it's Drumline with Nick Cannon. Go watch it. It's pretty entertaining. It's pretty I cool. remember that movie. Mm -hmm. It's not what got me into band. I just wanted to do music credit and PE credit at the same time. Fair enough. I don't know. I liked marching band. It was pretty cool, except for the people sometimes. Yeah. But that's the weird. That's the weird thing about band camp or band in general. You got the people who are too good to to actually communicate with you outside of that function. Yeah, it's just usually how it worked. It was great. People left me alone. Fair enough. Until you like you were the one dragging ass on the section, and you're like, you got to learn this shit by like next week. <laughs> it wasn't me there you go it was me for the first year because i could never remember our school's like fight song i could i didn't have it <laughs> i didn't have it memor like they expect like yeah memorize this by the end of the week i'm like the fuck what are you talking about i still had it halfway memorized by the time i was a senior though yeah 
It was rough. Those are always interesting times. Yeah. Memorize this shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, no. I had other shit to do. Yep. So our, our buddy Brad, uh, Brad Olson, wants to know, uh, what, what's your girlfriend's name? I don't have one yet. Oh, damn. We're working on it. Don't have one yet. Fair enough. Brad, Brad, you could be his girlfriend. No. He's married, has kids, and a dog. I'd rather not piss off his wife. Oh, well, you never know. She might let him go. Just for you. No. Fair enough. She, she, she makes more money than me. I'd rather not. Yeah. Do you get bored at work a lot? I work for the state. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do any cool projects? No. I'm literally telling people you're spending too much damn money. I don't know. That's got to be fun. Yeah. Especially when it's federal, state, and private institution funds. Yeah. Having to, ha- having to manage that is... It's interesting, but I get. But the fun part is you're telling your I tell people you're spending too much damn money. <laughs> do you have? Do they call you or do you call them? I call them. Do they answer most of the time? I hope they do. <laughs> Leave them a long voicemail, don't you? No, it's just an email. Oh, there you go. Got to like that. Yeah, I leave them an email on purpose. That way, it's recorded. Oh yeah, because then you have a chain of it instead of them saying they never got the phone call. Exactly. So if uh, if you decided to leave carry optics, you're gonna go to open, right? I want to, but at the same time, I just don't. I don't make the funds. So if I left carry optics, it would actually be production. Because you have a production gun. Exactly. I just take the dot off this thing, sell it, and then boom, I have a production gun. Yep. You already have production bags anyway. So. Yeah. Would you use Dawson? Would you use Dawson's for uh, production? Or do you uh, um, or Henning's? Uh, Henning. I like Henning products. I like how they keep it slim to the mag. So that's primarily why I like Henning products. Yeah. You figured out the, the magic sauce to make a 23 reliable clock mag. Yes. You just jam the round in there. And then hope it sticks, right? Yes. And also use stronger ammo. So my ammo runs 135 power factor. And that's how I'm able to make sure it runs uh, 23 plus one. Are you, are you running a coated bullet then? Uh, yeah. So... Uh, got a blue bullet, blue bullet, 125 grain, and I these fly at about 1108. That's what I chronoed at at nationals last year, so mm-hmm. that's that's what I prefer. What'd you chrono out at uh Dragon's Cup this year? Um, it was massively up and down, like there was such a large velocity swing because of the reloaded ammo I was using. Like it was, it was like 860, 870. And then 940 were my three rounds. I was like, the hell happened here? <laughs> powder powder got sticky. <laughs> I don't like, I honestly have no clue because it wasn't my ammo. Damn it. Well, that's no bueno. Well, at least you didn't go no sub, at least you didn't go uh, sub minor. Yeah, but I mean, having two of my rounds riding 126 power factor, no, that was no bueno. That is no bueno, especially when you need it to strip the round. You need the power to strip the next round. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the entire match, I was running 22 plus one instead of 23. Well, at least you played it safe instead of jamming a 23rd round in there and it not cycling it or not sticking in there. Exactly. That's for sure. Now, um, da, 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 da. You, so, so you, you have a Tanfo. Do you, have yeah. you dabbled in other guns besides the Tanfo and Glock? Um, I mean, I shot a, okay. So like my first travel into Tanfo was actually shooting a friend's gun. Cause I have a holster that can multi-fit, uh, with a whole bunch of other things just by changing, uh, the position of wedges or like changing out the wedges. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I thought the gun was good. I was like, okay, this, this could be an experiment gun in the future. But after messing with it for three months, I was like, no, I just want to shoot gloss all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I've shot some CZs. I wouldn't mind shooting one. I just don't have the money for it because I can buy two Glocks for one shot or two. Yeah. And plus, plus mags. Mags are expensive. Yep. Well, I mean, actually, um, cost analysis, like uh, like this this mag is only like $10 cheaper than like a CZ or a Tanfo mag in the end. No, that's not terrible then. Um, what else is there? production gun wise what canic and uh sig mm-hmm. i haven't 
I haven't really messed around with those. I wouldn't mind shooting a SIG. Um, I just think the trigger is a little bit squishy. Canic, I like the feel of a Canic, except the um, the base of the grip. I don't really like because they kind of, they, they round it off at the bottom. And I actually kind of like having that bump as like a center, as a locating center uh, portion of the of the grip. Like I actually put, it pushes my hand to a more proper spot for me. Yeah. So do you have issue when you uh, like swap between if you're shooting somebody else's gun after you've shot your Glock all day? I mm, I think more about the trigger instead of uh, the grip. Yeah. So like I'll I'll just solidify. It's like all right, that feels right, and then I just focus on the trigger. Yeah. I so I'm, I'm 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 sure Tim's told you before. Like even if you're switching between guns, like how do you how do you pull the trigger without disturbing the sights, right? Mm -hmm. And that's primarily through your weekend mm -hmm. grip, and then you know not pulling the trigger in a way that you end up, you know, swinging the gun all over the place with your right hand. Oh, yeah. Your strong hand. Absolutely. Yeah. Just mit mitigating the movement of those sights is adamant. Exactly. That's all. That, that's primary thing that you can do with, you know, two hands on the gun. Mm -hmm. That's faux show. So um, who have some of it? Um, what is something that currently would like to tell past you about shooting? Don't be a bitch. Just go for it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, when I was younger, a lot of a lot of the times I was thinking about how do I do things the correct way, and not necessarily analyzing on how I could do things faster or, or like pulling the or pulling the trigger in a way that I get to shoot a target faster, that kind of thing. Just like, mm -hmm. hey, go for it. You can, you can learn some of this uh, stuff and analyze it later. Just go for it. Gotcha. Yeah, and learning to analyze is a def is definitely a skill set. A lot of people don't a lot of people either don't have it or they have it or they or they rely on someone else to do it for them right yeah so then you got to send somebody all your match video and then just wait for their analysis and if they're missing something you're missing out on something on the picture exactly now uh who's been uh some of your uh biggest uh mentors in the sport um local mentors dozzy in a way just simply watching him uh it kind of it kind of tunes me into like hey how do i how can I more efficiently do something with his kind of mentalities? Like he's very, he's very emotionless. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I, whereas I try to, I tried the emotionless thing before. And then after JJ's class, I switched over to, Hey, make everything a positive experience, no matter what. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then training with Con Connor and Calvin on occasion, they've been, they kind of been, like, we kind of act as each other's mentors in a way. Um, Tim, JJ, and then Brandon Powers has been messaging me a bit lately. Nice, yeah. Brent, Brandon's a good dude. Brandon's a great dude. Even though he likes Beretta pizza guns, what's wrong with that? But, but they don't provide pizza though. Like if I mean, if we call them pizza guns, they at least should be able to produce a pizza. I mean, the way you do that is everyone bets money, and then you make everyone else pay when you win with your pizza gun, right? I guess so. I, I guess that's the new challenge now. I guess with my Glocks, that means I need to figure out how to get Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah, there you go. You just know that you have a Horcrux of Gaston, right? You know, he's never gonna, you're never, he's never going to die because there's so many Glocks in the world. They're all important, parted somehow with his soul. So, yep, it's got to, it's got to be in the trigger. It's got to be that, that the trigger. You never know, or it's the plastic sights that everyone rips off and throws away. Yeah, <laughs> it probably <laughs> is the sights. <laughs> <laughs> And he knows they're all in the landfill. But um, uh, you're not sponsored, are you? I have zero sponsors other than my Visa credit card. All right, Visa credit card. Thank you for sponsoring Matt. It's wonderful. They love it. You love it when you make your payment. Absolutely. They're like, what the fuck did this dude buy again? Well, no, they can see that pretty much. They can just figure out where you bought it from. Pro Shop, Natchez, Powder Valley. Yeah. Yep. Blue bullets. Well, I bought like <laughs> I think I think it was towards the end of 2020 when I bought like 26,000 bullets just so I'm covered for like three years. And then the delivery man was probably cussing your ass out too. Well, thankfully the, I didn't see the delivery man that day. So oh, that's that good a, then. Yeah. The last time I had bullets delivered, I was I was nice enough and got it off their uh, their little car. Yeah. 
I just got it. It was already at the tailgate. I was like, all right, I'll just pick this and take this inside. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, guy. Yep. Thanks for delivering it. I've had, I've had some people uh, actually had to go pick up their amp, their bullets from like the, the loading docks. Ooh. I'm like, yeah, we're not fucking unloading this. You're going to have to come get it. I think I was using a different... Yeah, I was using a different bullet manufacturer at the time, and the guy looked so worn out after delivering, like, I think it was three cases of bullets one time. I just gave him a bottle of water for his time. <laughs> I was like, here, dude, go go sit down. I, th- I think I think uh, everyone else can wait for, like, five minutes at least. Exactly. So, Matt, um, as we're getting near the end of the show, um, what are things that people can either start doing or stop doing to get better? Um, hmm. start, start setting goals that you know you can achieve within a year. Stop, stop worrying about doing all the correct things all the time or like something that's institutionalized. Explore, explore in yourself what you can do or things that you might want to change. It's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, so here, actually, let's, let's ask you that. Like, what is, what is something that you're currently exploring or that you want to change in yourself? Uh, I'd love to make a class, um, but I'd more rather have an A class percentile finish every match. So, so I'm working on finding, you know, finding the correct stage plan for me, ways to best execute that stage plan, and uh, be realistic with myself. Okay. Let's also see how we can get you to move around faster around the stage. Yeah, that's that requires. I'll stand up. That requires to do some of this. We're working on that. I mean, hey, man, I'm working on losing the same thing. Yep. But we all can't have Ken's butt. Yeah, right. Okay, GM's talking GM things from across the gym, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, How to improve the booties. Well, there's a little bit of disconnect since he's open and I'm carry optics. So he he moves his butt faster? Yeah, he kind of has to if he wants competitive times. Yeah. He's He's also been skinnier longer than I have. Yeah. That's true. Being skinny does help, but having muscle but mass does help more too. Yep. I think personally for me, I think muscle endurance is really more the key factor. It definitely does help though when you're a lot lighter and you can just, you know, you're not so tired after running. Cardio is life. Yeah. Let's, let's say COVID definitely puts some weight on me and also my college years. Well, yeah. If it's, if it's not, if it's not boba or food, right? Uh, Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I really, I, like, even though I'm millennial Asian, like I rarely get Bobo. Yeah. 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 I'm surprised because it's probably got to be like on, it's like a Starbucks, right? I get there's it. Like, there's one on mo- every corner, right? I get it at like, yeah. Right. I'm like, <laughs> I get it at most quarterly, but even then like my longest time without drinking Bobo was like four years. Yeah. Are there any good flavors? Milk tea is always like the classic milk tea was always a good one. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, try that, to get that, one of those. Then. I mean, that's that's always your measure of how good a boba shop usually is. Is by their milk tea. Yep. Good to know. It, it's more or less a standardized recipe, and then depending on how much sugar you like. Fair enough. Well, Matt, where can the people find you on the internet? Uh, if you'd like to find me on the internet. Please don't. I'm joking. <laughs> um, on Instagram, I am the dot chewy cookie. Um, if you want to find me on Beano's, it's the chewy cookie, but no dot. And it's the same deal for YouTube. Uh, just on YouTube, make sure you put in USPSA. Otherwise, it puts you into, into a baking channel. Yeah, we don't want to. I mean, maybe we want to go to a baking channel, but you never know. I do want to thank the listeners for watching this one. It's probably been a good one. You probably enjoyed the humor and a little bit of the side banter. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, Matt, thank you for coming on. It's been fun. It's been real fun. We should have to do this again. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming on. Until next time, guys, get out and do the things. And I'll see you on the next one.